this project, we're going to be using Knit Picks Billow yarn, which is a bulky, so a category number five yarn. This one is a cotton, Billow is, and worked out really well. I needed five skeins, and they were 120 yards each. You'll need a 10.5, which is a 6.5 millimeter knitting needle. You'll also need a yarn needle to weave in your ends and a pair of scissors. All right, to begin, we're going to cast on, for the size that I made, 101 stitches. If you want to adjust the stitch multiple in the middle of the blanket, the brocade, diamond brocade is a multiple of eight plus one with six stitches on each side for the garter stitch border. So multiple of eight plus one and then add 12 so you have a border on each side and then you can work the pattern as written. So you can use any cast on method that you like. Typically for me, I like to use either the crochet cast on which uh, gives a nice edge or I'll do a cable cast on or a knitted cast on. So I'm gonna do a cable cast on here. So I already put my slip knot on, have my first stitch and I do knit English method. So obviously if you do continental, you can just adjust and you just like you're knitting the first stitch and you slip it over to the left hand. Now you're gonna enter the right here between the two so instead of going into the stitch, you're going in between the stitches, yarn over, and pull this up, and then make it big, put it on this. So I'm not going to cast on 101, because obviously in this space, you won't be able to see it. So I have adjusted mine to where I'm going to cast on three multiples of eight, and then add one for the eight plus one, and then 12. So that gives me 37. So I'm not going to make you watch me you know, cast on 37 stitches. So I will come back when they're cast on and we'll talk about the border. All right, I have all of my stitches cast on and obviously for a full size blanket, there will be a lot more stitches here. Um, but for this example, I just have 37 and you can tell Billow has a really neat texture, but you know, you have some that are real skinny and some that are fat and so, um, that does affect the finished texture of the blanket, which I really like that kind of nubby texture, but if you don't, you can find a, um, a smoother yarn. And, but you'll notice that throughout the tutorial, so I wanted to address it. Now the first eight rows are exactly the same, and it's simple garter stitch. So you just knit every stitch. Insert from front to back with the yarn in the back, yarn over, pull up a loop, and push off. So most of you probably know how to use a knit stitch, how to do the knit stitch. So just showing you real quick. So for eight rows, all you're going to do is knit every single stitch, and that's going to give us our garter stitch border. Okay, so I have done my border, as you can see here, and we're ready to begin the body of the blanket. Now the edge stitches are built into the pattern, so don't worry about having to like remember to do six garter stitch edges because it's already written in. So the first row begins with a knit 10. So that's our six plus some more for the pattern. So knit 10. Okay, and this is my six. You see, the six is the border. Okay, always, always going to be knit at the beginning and end. Six, let me push these up. And then I need to knit 10 total, so I'm going to do four more. Okay, and there's my 10. And now the repeat is going to be purl one, knit seven. So when you purl, bring it between the two needles. That really got me when I was learning how to knit. Didn't know where to bring it, so bring it between the two. Insert from back to front. Yarn over. Pull through to the back and slip that off. Okay, and then knit seven. So repeat that. Purl one, knit seven. Purl one, knit seven. Until you get to the last 11 stitches, and then I'll show you how to finish up this row. When you get here to the end, 
I've done my purl one, knit seven, until I get to 11 stitches. I'm going to purl one. And then knit the last 10, and that will be the end of row one. All right, ready for row two. Uh, this is the back, but even though it's not a reversible stitch, it makes a nice stitch pattern in the back. So the first thing we're going to do is to knit six. So you got the five, the the uh, sorry, the border, which is six here. So knit. Okay, I've got a border here. And now I'm going to purl three. So I'll bring it between and purl three. Let's slide my stitches down. All right, this next part is a little more not complicated, but I'm going to knit one, purl one, knit one, and purl five. Okay, here comes number five, and that's the repeat here. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl five. So do that repeat until you get to the last 12 stitches. When you reach the last 12, you will knit one, purl one, Knit one, purl three, and then you'll be down to your border, so you'll knit these last six. For row three, I've already started by knitting eight stitches. That's the first part, so please knit eight for row three. And the repeat is purl one, knit three. So, purl one, knit three. Repeat the purl one, Knit three until you have nine stitches left on your needle. When you come down to these last nine, you're going to purl one, and knit the remaining eight stitches. For row four, begin by knitting your border stitches, which are six and then purl one, and now we begin our repeat. The repeat is knit one, purl five, Knit one and purl one. Okay, so the repeat portion just keep you do knit one, purl.
purl 5, knit 1, purl 1, and repeat until there are 6 stitches left for our border, and then you just knit those 6, and that will be the end of row 4. For row 5, you start with our 6 garter stitch edges here, so knit 6, and the repeat is purl 1, knit 7. So that's what you'll repeat, purl 1, knit 7, all the way down to the last 7 stitches. When you get to the last 7, purl 1, and then knit your 6 border stitches. Row 6 is exactly the same as row 4, so you knit 6, and purl 1, and you get to the repeat section, which was our knit 1, purl 5, knit 1, and purl 1. So the repeat is knit one, purl five, knit one, purl one, until you get to the last six, and then you knit those last six for the border. For row seven, we're gonna repeat row three. You can start to see our little diamond taking shape here. So row three began with a knit eight. So I have done that. And our repeat is purl one, Knit three. So repeat, purl one, knit three, all the way to the end until you have nine stitches left. And then you will purl one and knit eight. For the last row of our pattern stitch repeat, there are eight total rows that repeat. We're going to repeat row two. So go ahead and knit six for our border, and then we'll purl three. And now we're ready for our repeat section. Just knit one. Purl one, knit one, and purl five. So repeat that until you get down to the last 12 stitches. Down to our last 12, and we will knit one. Purl one. Knit one, purl three, and then we'll knit our last six. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can see the diamonds that have already taken place. Okay, so eight rows makes the diamond pattern, and what you'll do is you'll just keep repeating those eight. If you're making the same size blanket that I did, then you will work until the entire thing is 34 inches from the beginning. If you've changed your blanket size, just feel free to keep repeating those eight until it is as big as you like, as long as you like. When you get to the end, you will work seven rows in garter stitch, so knit every stitch. The reason we started with eight and we're ending with seven is because we have a bind off row. When you're ready to bind off, You'll bind off knitwise. If you've never done this before, here's what it looks like. I'm gonna, I know I'm doing it in the middle of my row, but it doesn't matter. This is my little example piece. You will knit, so you'll knit the first two. So 
you have to have a stitch over here to jump it over. Let's pretend this is my second stitch here. And then you just insert like this and oh, jump it over. And then you knit the next one. Grab it and jump it over. Just be careful not to pull it too tight because you'll make for a tighter end than your cast on edge. But you just do this and this will give you that eighth row of border and that will take care of it and you'll have this nice border on both ends and on the sides with this diamond stitch pattern in the middle.